welcome to Yorkville Congregational United Church of Christ, a church where we welcome, serve, and care. And on the special Sunday morning, when we're going to hear from the mission trip participants and the leaders and Robin about all the great work they're going to do this morning. Now we have some announcements. I don't have my remote, so... Candy donations are needed for the 4th of July parade. Please, no chocolate, it's, it melts and gets messy. You can put the donations in the bin in the narthex. A VBS volunteer meeting will be held in the Fellowship Hall following worship today, so please grab a chair and go and meet uh, in there with all of us. It's going to be a great week next week. It's not next week, it's a week from um, today. If you're interested in walking with our float in the 4th of July parade, please sign up in the narthex. It's a really important event. And Friday, July 19th, there is a Kane County Cougars game at 6.30. Tickets are $12. If you're interested in going, please see Robin. Camp Firelights begins in one week. Have you registered your child? Have you registered your child? Please do, or your grandchildren. You can do so at myvbs.org backslash YCUCC. Summer Movie Discussion Series, Origin. Uh, it's a really interesting movie. Uh, please join us on Tuesday, July 16th in the conference room at 7 p.m. Now let us begin our worship, DJ. For those that are able, please rise. God is in our midst, forming us to be God's people. We need not fear. Come to the Lord, who will surround you with God's righteousness. Amen. Please stay standing for the invocation prayer. Uh, God, we call you, each of us, into being. You delighted in your works. You gift us for deliverances <laughs> of you, wisdom and practices of love in your creation. In whatever ways we still struggle to accept and celebrate our own unique offerings, feel free us free for narrow thinking. God. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You can remain you can remain standing for the opening hymn, Ten Thousand Reasons. Um, it's found on the screen or in your um, supplemental hymnal, right? Yeah, that's what we're on. I am on, but I'm not on. Right. So sorry. Kids sing loud. <laughs> Thank you. 
You may be seated. Now we have come to a time of prayer for those of us here in person and for those of you participating online at home. If you're at home, you can record your prayer requests in the online, um, online guest book or in the chat. Now let us begin our time of prayer.
where Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I am the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we'll sing. Lord, listen to your children praying. Now, it is time for us to give our gifts back to God that God has so freely given us as we work to maintain and spread and serve our community as the children, as the children, I call them children, as our young people did this past week. Let us now receive our morning offering.
Gracious God, as we embrace our mission to spread your love and truth, we dedicate those offerings to furthering your kingdom on earth. Use them, reach the lost, heal the broken, and bring hope to the world. Amen. Okay, our scripture for today is 1 Peter, verses 4, 7 through 11. The end of everything has come. Therefore, be self-controlled and clear-headed so you can pray. Above all, show sincere love to each other because love brings about the forgiveness of many sins. Open your homes to each other without complaining and serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Whoever speaks should do so as those who speak God's word. Whoever serves should do so from the strength that God furnishes. Do this so that in everything God may be honored through Jesus Christ. To him be honor and power forever and always. Amen. Now let's hear what the verse is saying to the church. Are the the handhelds working? Okay. Oh, I am working. Okay. Yeah, now you have the... All right. right. Can I have all of the kids and all of the kids, (laughs) the mission trip people come up and join me up here on steps? Benjamin, Jacob, all you guys, you want to come up here? I saw the Maddens over here too. You guys, those of you that did not go on the trip, you can either sit down here or you can sit on the front step here. This will be our... Oh, you could sit right in front of your brother. How nice. I'll give this to you, Luke. Oh. Don't say more than you need to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, those of you who did not go, how many of you know what a mission trip is? Sort of. Jacob, what is a mission trip? A mission trip is where we go work with some people mm-hmm. and make them happy and we talk about God. Mm-hmm. So we go and we do work for other people and we make them happy and we do work for God. I could not have explained it any better. <laughs> Thank you. So last week we were in Nashville, Tennessee. It was a whopping 100 degrees almost every day. Um, we were not outside in the heat every day, I promise you. <laughs> um, and so today these fine people in front of you are going to share stories from the trip. Is that okay? I don't have anything else planned. <laughs> okay, so um, throughout the week, we had these little journals. Now, we all have them. Um, um, our covers are all individualized to us. So this is mine. My cover says, we don't want to waste these moments. Um, and so in these journals, they were led by each day. For those of you, that's really tiny. I don't promise you'll read it. Um, These are our trip journals. These are something that um, YouthWorks would provide if we did a traditional trip. And so I took on the challenge and made our own. Each day has a devotional and then a set of questions that each um, student answered on their own. And then a fun notes page, which I filled up. Um, So each day had a different verse. And day one, which is the day that we left, was uh, 1 Peter 4.10 which is on all of our shirts. I'll quiz them and see if they can remember what it means. What is 1 Peter 4.10? Go ahead. You could, yeah. Is it on? Go ahead. (laughs) Uh, 1 Peter 4.10 is, um, and serve each other according to the gift each person has received 
as good managers of God's diverse gifts. And so we went into this week knowing that some people are musically gifted, some people are super smart at math, some people love cooking, some people hate doing dishes, and we use those <laughs> and to make our group stronger. So that was our whole theme for the week. Um, and so now, oh yeah, there are pictures. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> All of the sleeping pictures are of Luke. <laughs> well, that's okay. Actually, those are the those are the ones that worked out. Happened to be of Luke. Um, <laughs> that's my phone of game. That's from a game called Exploding Kittens. Um, okay, so. Um, now I'd like to have all of these fine people share a story from the trip and how they grew in their faith. If it doesn't work, that won't work. Testing? There you go. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, so I didn't prepare Say anything. Your name. Huh? Say your name. What? Say your name. Who are you? Oh, uh... What am I? Yes. Oh, I'm I'm <laughs> Luke um, Defus. Uh, many of you may know that. Hopefully, I've been here for a long time. But, anyways, I have not prepared anything, so I'm just gonna tell you my yes. favorite part of the trip and then my worst no. part of the trip. <laughs> I guess not. What about one of these questions? Friday's devotional questions were all about reflecting the trip. Um, and are all about how we can spread the God's word. So, uh, so I'm going to pick the how were you proud of yourself this week question. Good question. <laughs> uh, so, sorry, I'm distracted with the pictures. Um, uh, so this, this week, it was a very tough week for me. I had a lot of hardships, I guess you could say. I, I did, I did not want to be out in the heat, and I was in the heat a lot. Um, so uh, I'm proud of myself for getting through that. Like, I got through that, not easily, but it, it, I got through it, but it was it was very hard, um, and it was not easy, but I did help a lot of people by doing that, and I was very happy by doing that. Thank you. Can I ask you what day was the hardest? Uh, we we went to this. We yeah. went to this thing called Thrift Smart, which, if you guys don't know what that is, which I assume you guys don't know what that is, um, Thrift Smart is this um, kind of like Goodwill, but you it helps and gives back to the community um, by um, giving like cards, and you get like fifty percent off on a lot of things and all this other stuff, and it will help under. Privilege, yeah, underserved. underserved people in the community by giving them like free shopping sprees or stuff like that, and they can come in. And, it, and a lot of this stuff is not very expensive. Like, we got a bag there for seventeen dollars, and it's a very, very nice bag. If you want to see it, there's pictures. <laughs> Just away from me, mouth a bit. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So. Well, where do you it's want okay, it? It's okay. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> yeah, you're doing great. Okay. Um, so uh, then the, the Thrift Smart is my hardest day because we pretty much had no breaks in a sense. Like it was really, really hard because we had to span the whole day. And if you don't know us children, the Gen Z's people here, we do not span. We sit down all day, okay? We are the lazy people, <laughs> so um, yeah, we, we we don't stand. So it was very very hard on my feet. I wanted to sit down. My back was killing me. DJ's back was killing him too. It was it was really hard. I do sound like an old person, don't I? Um, <laughs> okay. So yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna hand it <laughs> off to DJ. Would you like to pick a question? I did send this to them. I did say, come prepared. <laughs> Which one did you do again? I did the How Are You Proud. Oh, yeah, 
Okay. So I'm going to do the same one Luke did. Uh, how would I describe this week of myself? We were at this place called Project Cure. And when we got there, she like explained all the stuff. And wa we watched this video about like how they like run the business or whatever. And when we actually started working, we got into this room where it was like we had to sort out medical supplies and all that. And then once we had lunch, we did like a team building activity, right? Mm -hmm. what, what is Project Care about? How are they help that team? We package, we package medical supplies and then they ship it out to different countries and that, and that's how they help people if they don't have medical supplies. Okay, so Project Cure is this really, really cool, cool place. Like, so you go in there, you have medical supplies that is all donated. And I think the worst part about Project Cure is whenever you are there, you have you have to do, uh, sift through stuff that is old. And if something is expired, you throw it away. And it's just heartbreaking because we threw away so much stuff, it, like a bunch of needles and EpiPens and all this other stuff that was expired, but they can't use it. So we had to throw it away. <laughs> it was heartbreaking. But the whole whole premise of this project cure is they get donations from hospitals, people that can use it, and then they package it up, send it out to um, underprivileged countries, and they let them use it. And one of the stories that we were told is in a country they are using plastic bags to heat babies, like when they come out. Um, Newborn babies, because they don't have more babies, incubators. Yes, yes, I couldn't think of that word, incubators, so they use... They would put plastic bags over their bodies to keep babies warm. Which is, should never happen, it's very wrong. So, one of their main solutions is to try to get incubators out, or just something else that could possibly do that, and it's... I think that that is one of the best parts of the trip because you, once you walk into this warehouse, it's a huge warehouse. Like you could actually see what you were doing and you can actually see what you want to help, who you want to help and all this other stuff. And by walking into this warehouse, it just gives you this pump up of energy and like, it's just like, okay, I want to help as much people as I possibly can today because you see how much stuff has to be done and it is, it's an amazing. Sorry, I took over your thing. You're fine. So, These pictures are from Project Cure. Yeah. This was Project Cure. So after lunch, the, uh, me and a couple other people, we went out into the warehouse part. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of chairs, like medical chairs or like hospital chairs and beds. And we had to test them out and like write a bunch of stuff on a paper. So of course, I did the testing. That was pretty fun. And uh, we had to like package them up and all that. And there was just like incubators and like all, like all different types of medical stuff from that in there. And there, there you go. Okay. Um, I'll do like the, um, <laughs> advice to offer um, people going into it or that want to go on the mission trip. Um, well, I'm Reagan Ramirez. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I think, like, if you're, if you want to go on a mission trip, uh, like, it is going to be tough, but um, you just have to remember um, there's there's a verse of the Bible, Palms 119, um, and it's basically about how God is with you no matter how scary, you, like, the time is. Or, like, you know, no matter where you are, God is always with you. And I feel like that is, like, really important to remember um, with everything because, like, you know, you're out of, you're away from your house for, like, a full week, which is really hard for some people, um, you know, you are, like, kind of sharing 
living space with like a whole group of people, which also can be hard. And then you're forced to, or not forced, like <laughs> you're doing like um, hard work for like a whole lot of time. Um, so I guess just remembering that verse is like really important. Um, let's read. So, Evan and Dakota and Deanna are not able to be here today, so they sent in some their statements. Um, Luke, could you read Evan's? Yeah. And then Deanna, you'll read Dakota's. So, Evan's statement says the Evan whole stayed in Tennessee. Yeah. He liked it that much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the whole trip was amazing, not just for me, but for everyone. Possibly my favorite part of the trip would be singing happy birthday to this guy in a homeless shelter. It was, it was a day shelter. Um, um, on the first day of, the wor of working, everyone in the cafeteria joined in um, while we were singing happy birthday and he lit up. Like you could see everything on his face. It was, it was amazing. Everywhere we worked was great and he made me feel like I was doing something good for others who needed it. That is the whole reason I went on this mission trip. That Evans. Yeah, Evan um, was told <laughs> to sing happy birthday to a gentleman at this day shelter that we served at on the first day. Um, his birthday was the day before, but they were closed. And so they had cupcakes for him and cookies and all these different desserts. And he went in and over the sound system, sang happy birthday by himself to all of these people during lunch. And this guy was just like, he was glowing. I was across the room and you could you could feel the energy in the room and how excited he was and he felt very loved in that moment. Very funny part, the sound system was off. It was, he was so loud, you could hear me. <laughs> but it's okay. Thank you for reading. Um, so I'm also gonna read Dakota's statement. Um, Throughout this trip, God has revealed the light guiding me through, the, through helping me with the patient. Through helping me with patience. The trip helped me to have new experiences serving the community and also getting to know everyone more. Through these opportunities, I was able to talk to people at the Thrift Smart, get to know two amazing little girls, that was my favorite part of the trip, <laughs> and give them someone new to play with, help, back me uh, help pack medicine supplies for patients in need and weed an area that we used for a playground. Also, I got to know the kids more. I had meaningful conversations about serving and our personal lives. Day three was very rough for me, and a lot of people around me showed me love and patience, which allowed me to take a step back and do the same for others on different, on different days. I was able to grow and realize that it's not about com comparing our solution situations to others, but to try and show them love and empathy, although it might may be hard, palms... Psalm. Psalms. <laughs> Um, 19, 119, 119, 105 helped me reflect, especially on the ride home, about how God's light guided me this week and allowed us all to push outside of our comfort zone. I am so happy that this was my first mission trip and enjoyed it very much. Thank you to all our leaders for being wonderful examples all the time. I'm going to read Psalm 119, 105 for everybody. Um, we use the, um, it, you can, um, if you want to follow along, it's a little different. That it, Psalm 119, verse 105 is, your word is a lamp before my feet and a light for my journey. Um, and so this is the last day. It was about reflecting on the journey that we had just went on. Um, and a lot of the kids, I think, really took that to heart you know, they're able to see God's light through them throughout the entire week. All right. Um, Bob or Carrie, can I do you want to share? You got to pass the microphone. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Would you like a question? Or are you you're good? That's okay. Okay. <laughs> I was going to a little. Um, one of the, some of the, the goals of the mission trip that I think we accomplished is it am i working okay um we worked a lot on community living so we did a lot of 
everyone helped out cooking, washing dishes, cleaning up, being on schedule. Uh, we did a lot of spiritual development work through the journaling, uh, certainly serving at the four different spots that you've heard referenced. And there's a lot of personal growth. I think uh, we, as adults, we saw that in the youth and in ourselves as well as we uh, shared through discussion. We went out of our comfort zones, helping in different ways, different aspects. And we, throughout the trip, also wanted to be sure to thank everyone, thank the congregation for your donations that allowed us to do this trip, to be able to travel, to uh, stay in these wonderful accommodations. <laughs> well, maybe not wonderful, but these <laughs> <laughs> nice accommodations. <laughs> and to um, the food that was donated, the um, it helped, and we did. We were able to do a good big shop and take care of the food for the week. And we even had a special night to go to Savannah's candy store so mm -hmm. in downtown Nashville, which was a treat, so thank you for that. Um, and uh, thanks, wanted to, because she's probably watching. The yeah, she's <coughs> watching. Thank Karen. Thank Karen. Uh, our daughter in Nashville, she hosted us the Tuesday night. We had a nice barbecue at her place, and she provided some great insights on Nashville and helped guide us Thursday to a wonderful location for our kind of wrap-up luncheon. Um, thanks to, to all the other adults, to Carrie for her compassionate listening and praying for us. Uh, for medical expertise, <laughs> mm. uh, and for keeping us on schedule. Deanna, who did a great job with the group, uh, a lot of the uh, teamwork, team building type, uh, team building things that we did, uh, I think at night and during the day. Um, Deanna's a big spark of energy, as you can <laughs> imagine. She kept us going whenever uh, anybody was uh, having trouble and helped us to persevere through all that. And um, her outdoor knowledge helped us identify, identify poison ivy, which oh, was yeah. helpful mm -hmm. when we were out weeding. Uh, and of course, special thanks to Robin for all the work that she's done planning the trip, arranging the trip. <laughs> and not just the organizing, but helping create the spiritual programming, doing all the um, coordinating with youth works and the different sites that we are at. So it's, it, it's really a tremendous effort that she put in to make this a success. And we were all very grateful for her leadership while we were there and leading us through the discussions and the helping us as we all do in this trip. So, thanks. Thank you, Deanna. Terrific. Um, Deanna, I believe, is watching online. So, hi, Dia. <laughs> um, she sent in a her statement. I'm going to read it really quick. Um, she says, it was Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. who wrote, a mind that is stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. The group before you today has been stretched thanks to your generosity and support. You provided a unique opportunity for youth and adults alike to push outside our comfort zones and expand our horizons. Our minds, spirits, and souls have all been stretched. Some of us have never been to Nashville before. We learned about gentrification, the process of neighborhood changes where wealth takes over lower income neighborhoods and longtime residents are displaced because they can't afford the new standard of living. This process led us to serve people without an address, at a community day shelter where we cleaned gutters, cared for children, handed out shower supplies, and rolled toilet paper bottles. Perhaps you've never considered just how far six squares of toilet paper will go. I had not, and it stretched me. 
We organized backs, donated Halloween costumes, and cleared a woodland play space for a youth center who serves underprivileged kids. We sorted and organized merchandise in a thrift store where all proceeds go to organizations serving those in need. My personal favorite was serving at Project Cure, where we packaged about $75,000 worth of medical supplies to be shipped to a hospital in Tunisia. Our work th there has an international impact, caring for God's children across the ocean in northern Africa. Our group stretched and grew as we prepared our own meals, ate new foods, and did dishes. We grew in our experience of communal living. We grew in our faith, spending time each day focused on scripture and how it applied to our service. Robin created journals to guide us and provide personal reflection. These journals were designed with great thoughtfulness and intention to narrow our focus on God's presence and the opportunities he opens for, before us. We ended the week doing as Jesus did with a foot washing ceremony. Each one of us was stretched by this mission trip experience, and we walk away prepared to serve again. Thanks to all who supported this trip for your prayers, your food, your finances, and your encouragement. Diana Bazan. So I watch these kids grow in each other, and I watch them grow off of each other. And it was, it's always such a nice, I get emotional, so easy. <laughs> but it, long week. <laughs> it is, um, it's such a nice experience to watch them see in each other. The last day, um, we went to a park for lunch and we had some team building at the park and then we sat around and we talked about each other's strengths. And one of my favorite experiences was hearing them talk about all of their strengths amongst the group. And one thing Luke, I remember, bring up is Reagan, you will find the good in anybody. And that is such a true statement. She is such a light in every group, no matter where we're at. She, um, we were walking down Broadway. That was our free night out. We went to eat at Hard Rock Cafe, so that was super fun. So thank you for those funds that allowed us to do that. Um, but before we did that, we were walking out. You may have seen all of the pictures of DJ and Luke in the pouring rain. It was literally pouring rain. <laughs> That was the one night um, that we got to go out down Broadway in the rain. Um, but as we were doing that, we walked past a homeless man with a dog. And lovely Reagan says, should we give him some money? As her heart just swelled for him. So that was a conversation that we had to have about homelessness and how you're going to see homelessness everywhere and why we shouldn't give money to every homeless person that we see on the side of the road. Um, <clears throat> and DJ's energy throughout the trip and how he complimented Luke's not as big <laughs> energy <laughs> throughout the trip, <laughs> but Luke's inquisitiveness and how he can tell everything like it is. Um, and then Evan just being how lovely and big that Evan can be. Um, so it was just great. And then Dakota was the glue that kept everybody together. So it was just so nice to see all of these kids getting along. We had no problems. Um, everybody got to cook something and everybody was so proud of the meals that they made. Everybody was on a schedule, and if they, they weren't on the schedule, they still pitched in. I can help clean dishes, I can help put stuff away. The one thing we didn't really get to do that we wanted to was teach them how to do laundry, so sorry guys, we, we didn't quite get to the laundry part of things, but it was busy, like we were busy everywhere, and Dina made some really nice points about every place that we went to. Uh, the first day we went to this community center and the guy kind of said our gutters needed to be cleaned 
And we thought he was only joking and brought it up in DJ right away. I'll do that. I want to clean the gutters. I mean, it was like 93 degrees out yeah. and he's out with Deanna and Bob <laughs> outside all day cleaning the gutters. It was just so great to watch all, everybody in their element getting to do stuff that they wanted to do, but still outside of their comfort zone. And rarely did they complain. But that second day, being on their feet all day, whew, and they, they let us know that they were yeah. not happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they did, they did push. So it is always such a joy to see these kids just giving it their all. So again, thank you for giving us this opportunity because it is so nice to be with this group and be able to serve him through them. Sitting here listening to everybody, and I'm thinking, I'm the mission, I work on the mission ministry through our church, and our church does so much as far as missions go. And as an example, are these people up here that we sent on a mission. I have a plaque at home that says, when was the last time you did something for the first time? You all did something for the first time, and you will have memories that years from now will come back to you thinking, I did this or I did that. All the time, Luke was really having a hard time sometimes, he talked about it. <laughs> but all the time he was there, the Lord was with him. He was with all of you. And do you feel like you touched someone while you were there in a way that you helped them, that you were doing this mission thing all the time you were there? So many little things that you might have been doing while you were there, just interacting with each other or with the other people that you went to help. You were on the mission and the Lord was with you all the time. When we're here every day, even as we're here right now, God is with us. He goes with us no matter where we go and you cannot get away from him. But I thought sitting here thinking, I've never got up and talked about missions before in this sense of the speaking of it. But I thought, I want to touch base to say you all did working, serving the God, each of you in your own way while you were gone. He was with you all the time, whether you knew it or not. And Luke in his times of just, it's too hot here, I'm not going to be here. But you got through it. And God was with you during all that time. And we want to say as a congregation, and let's applaud him. Thank you for serving. So I do have one more thing. Um, this is like one of our mottos throughout the week. On day day one of service, and it was day two of the trip, um, it, the title of the day was Helping Others. And you can't really see it because it's so small, but there are two triangles on the page. One is upside down and one's right side up. And the one that is right side up, with you know, the point at the top, it has me, others, and then God. And the one that's flipped, it's God, others, me. And so the idea of this triangle is to, in your mind, figure out who's more important. And not as, no, I'm not important in this situation, or others aren't important, but what is the order of importance for you? Is God at the top, or are you at the top? And so that, throughout the week, we would ask the kids and the leaders, where's your triangle? What does your triangle look like? Is it right side up or is it upside down? And so I'll leave that with you. Where's your triangle at? Is it right side up or, right, or upside down? Perfect. Lovely. Thank you all so much. I now have my microphone back, which is nice. I am, I, my, heart, my heart is warm. Like, my heart is warm right now. You guys did such a great job. And Robin, the preparation, like, that journal really rocks. Yeah, if you want a copy, that, I'll give you a copy. Yeah, I'm should, very proud of should, it. I'll give you, you a copy. You should get a copy because she works so hard on it and tell her how wonderful it is. And, and all of the young people and adults that really grew, and it's so heartwarming to hear the stories 
I looked forward to this Sunday so much. Um, so I'm going to, I don't know where you are in service, but I'm going to read this Bible verse, pray, and then we'll sing the hymn and the hallelujah. So this is Psalm, what did we say, 119, 105. And this is maybe how it sounds familiar to you. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And didn't we hear how these young people were a light to God's path and how they can serve as a light to our path and as we go out and we serve? So again, I just want to thank Robin and the young people and the adults that gave their week and to give up your week as a 15-year-old or 16-year-old to do something like this is very courageous in so many ways. And it's so wonderful how this congregation supports our young people and takes time to really listen to their stories. That's tremendous. So let's pray. God, we thank you with just so much praise and joy. And today we are so hopeful as we hear stories of how we can do your work in the world to help those that are underserved, those that need medical care, those that are hungry, those that need help with their house, those that need a park, those that need a way to be community together, God. And God, we're so thankful for the opportunity to grow as a community and to be led and inspired by our young people. Help us to leave here with this hope, hope as we watch the news, as we see the struggles, as we ourselves sometimes are tired and just don't want to get up and do the work we need to, let us be reminded that you are a light to our feet. Amen. Now let us stand and sing together. I'm going to live so God can use me. So now let's join hands, raise our hands, and sing the Alleluia together.
as we leave here, let us go and be inspired by the joy and the hope and to spread that love in and amongst our community. Amen.